our population is ageing. So we know that we're getting better at keeping people well and alive for longer. But as a consequence of that, um, some of aspects of our, of our skin function and our health function um, reduces. So what we're trying to do is to keep people healthier for longer. All of my research career has been looking at ageing in various forms. And the research that we're doing at the moment is focusing on how skin ages. Um, skin's a fantastic uh, system for studying ageing because we can see it and we can get to it and we can sample it. So it, it allows us to really understand the basic mechanisms that change as we age. So the work that we're doing currently um, is looking at the relationship between how our skin ages functionally with the changes that occur to the resident skin cells and the bugs that are supported by those cells on the surface of our skin and also the lipids within the skin and we're trying to understand the relationship between age, the microbiome and the lipids to understand which of those um, different features is driving the ageing process. If we can understand the relationship between our age, our lipids and the microbiome, will we be able to keep skin healthier for longer and that's our long term aim. So our ageing, we want this declining function to be extended so that this, this curve becomes more steeper towards the end, so we have an increased health span. I'm interested in microorganisms and how microorganisms interact with the human body and the environment in a number of different scenarios. The current project is looking at the microbiome of the skin and how it interacts with lipids on the skin. This is a review article looking at basically the things that need to be taken into account to assess this risk and we've also done research in this area and shown how quickly the microbiota of the skin can re-establish itself after, after very intensive cleaning and it's basically between 6 and 24 hours you can, you can basically re-establish the microbiome to pre-cleaning composition. So as we get older our skin changes quite a lot and older skin can be uh, more vulnerable to damage, it heals less quickly than younger skin and if we can work out how skin is changing as it gets older, maybe we can intervene and develop some steps to take to help older skin age better. We know that lipids have roles both on the surface, within the barrier that Rachel talked about, um, as fat storage and insulation in the subcutaneous fat, and then also in all the cells within your skin to communicate with each other. Another area that we're quite interested in is how frail elderly people compare with healthy elderly people. Um, so we're looking at some people who maybe have worse nutrition than the general population and how their skin might be affected into older age. Every time we have um, a research question that we try to answer, then that often opens up maybe 20 or 30 other research questions that we don't yet understand. So every time we find a new piece of evidence which helps us understand the ageing process, that facilitates us to understand even more about how we age.